Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the Tesla Model 3 to cover everything you ever wanted to know about it. From performance and handling to interior features, comfort, pricing, and so much more. I'll also take it for a thorough drive and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. This video is sponsored in part by Turo, the app that allows you to skip the lines at the rental counter and find local cars owned by people just like you and me. Huge thanks to them and the owner of this car for allowing this opportunity to come together. I'll talk about the app a little bit more later in the video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. As you'll see throughout the video, the Model 3 is a fascinating car for a lot of different reasons. Just climbing in it for the first time and powering it up is such a cool experience because there's no traditional key fob, there's no push button ignition. Instead, you get this little Tesla card. It's basically the size of any normal credit card and I guess there's some sort of magnetic strip or sensor built in because this serves as the key for the vehicle. So when you climb in, in order to unlock it, you just tap it in the center console right behind the cup holders. After that, all you have to do is just tap the brake. And it powers up. The other pretty cool thing is that there's a sensor in the seat. So when you get out of the vehicle, I'll just lift up for example, it powers it off. Then you get out, shut the door, lock it up, and you're all done. Another fun fact about this key card is that you can actually use it to lock and unlock the vehicle by just tapping it up against the B pillar. Of course, there's a smart key entry system as well, so as long as you have the key card in your pocket, you can just grab the door handle and it'll automatically unlock. I'll also be talking about this throughout the video as well, it's the Tesla app. You can pair the car to it, view charging status, and control all sorts of stuff. Plus. It's actually a substitute for the key card. With everything paired up properly, if you don't have this, the phone basically serves as the key for the vehicle. Just <laughs> absolutely wild. There's so much stuff to talk about in this video, so thanks a lot for sticking with me. Let's go ahead and power the car back up and continue on. By now, most of you are very familiar with the Model 3, so we're just going to jump right into the nitty gritty. Currently, the Model 3 is only being offered with the long-range battery and premium interior. The standard battery, which according to Tesla, won't be available for another 5-8 to eight months. It'll have an estimated range of 220 miles while being able to hit 60 miles an hour in 5.6 seconds. The long-range battery is a $9,000 option and ups the range to 310 miles while dropping the 0-60 to 60 time to 5.1 seconds. Once all of the models are being produced in full swing, base pricing should start around $35,000. If you don't include available federal tax credits and other incentives, this example would have started at $49,000. The only additional options shown here include deep blue metallic paint and enhanced autopilot. Together with a $1,200 destination and dock fee, total MSRP for what you see here comes out to be around $55,500. Again, that's before expected tax credits and incentives. The dual motor all-wheel drive variant starts at $54,000. It not only provides better traction and handling, but it also cuts acceleration time down quite a bit. Unlike traditional all-wheel drive systems, the dual motor uses two independent motors that digitally control torque to the front and rear wheels. They respond to changing conditions in as little as 10 milliseconds for seamless operation. However, if you really have a need for speed, you'll want to check out the dual motor performance model, which starts at $64,000. It accelerates to 60 miles an hour in just 3.5 seconds and tops out at 155 miles per hour. It also unlocks a host of exclusive options such as 20-inch wheels and performance tires, larger brakes, a lowered suspension, and more. To make the most out of charging a Model 3, you need to have a 240-volt circuit setup, 32-amp for the standard or 40-amp for the long range. With that in mind, the batteries will normally charge at a rate of 30 miles per hour for the standard and 37 miles per hour for the long range. To charge a depleted battery fully, it should take about 7.5 hours for the standard and 8.5 hours for the long range. 
It is possible to use a 120 volt outlet, but the actual charging times increase significantly, making it not ideal unless you just don't drive often. Finding one of Tesla's growing supercharging stations is becoming easier by the week. Plug into one of those and the rate skyrockets to 170 miles of range per 30 minutes, or 130 miles for the standard battery. So you can plug in, grab a bite to eat or run an errand, and be on your way. Unlike the Model S and Model X, there's no supercharging fee included in the purchase price, so you'll end up paying per use. This rear-wheel drive Model 3 is powered by a single three-phase internal permanent magnet electric motor and a liquid-cooled lithium-ion battery pack. It develops 271 horsepower and 307 pound-feet of torque. Again, in this configuration, the car can rocket to 60 miles an hour in 5.1 seconds. The transmission is a single ratio direct drive transaxle with a final drive ratio of 9 to 1. The gearbox is rounded through a column mounted shifter just like in the Model S and Model X. The cool thing about EVs in general is the instant rush of torque you get from a standstill as there's no powertrain lag. The Model 3 definitely feels quicker than the numbers suggest simply based off of that initial takeoff. At higher speeds, throttle response isn't quite as sharp, but there's still a ton of reserve left for passing and merging on the highway. There's no ludicrous mode or the same level of ferocity we've come to expect from other higher-end Teslas in recent time, but the Model 3 does not disappoint. I look forward to driving one of those performance models one day, as the acceleration should be a different story entirely. Hey everyone! When it comes to filming these reviews, there's a lot of traveling involved, whether it be a neighboring town or out of state. There's actually been instances where I've had to rent cars too, and while you gotta do what you gotta do to get the job done, it always ends up being somewhat of a hassle. On the other hand, Turo has opened my eyes to a whole new way of renting cars, especially when it comes to finding unique cars locally like this Tesla Model 3. Turo makes it easier to book the exact car you want for up to 35% less than traditional agencies. Plus, you get to skip that long process at the rental counter as it's all done through the Turo app on your smartphone. Choose from over 850 unique makes and models and book cars for any occasion at any price point. To learn more and book your first ride, follow the link in the description box below. The Model 3's suspension is fully independent, consistent of double wishbones in front with coilover twin tube shock absorbers and a stabilizer bar. The multi-link rear design is also accompanied by twin tube shocks and a stabilizer bar. Out in the road, the Model 3 feels like a proper sports sedan, similar to the likes of the Alfa Romeo Giulia I drove a while back. It is a heavy car, this example being around 4,000 pounds, but you really don't feel it as much as you think. The car's battery pack is under the floor, which results in a very low center of gravity. Plus, the weight distribution is just about perfect, 48% in front and 52% in the rear. Through corners, the Model 3 remains planted and stable with hardly any body roll. Grip is pretty good with the Michelin Primacy all seasons, but could be even better if opting for the Performance model which is offered with 20-inch wheels and Pilot Sport 4 summer tires. The 18-inch aero wheels shown here, which are standard by the way, come with 235-45 tires. While generally a quiet car, I noticed quite a bit of noise from the tires, especially over road imperfections. It's more or less dependent on the pavement quality. For a little extra style, 19-inch flow-formed alloys are also available. They're wrapped in the same width tires and have a slightly narrower sidewall. The steering is electrically assisted and offers speed sensitive power assistance and a variable ratio. The on center ratio is 10.3 to 1 and it takes about 2 turns to lock. The turning circle is measured at 38 feet. The steering is razor sharp and well weighted although it doesn't offer a lot of feel. You can adjust the effort via 3 modes, comfort, standard and sport. The steering is the firmest in sport. When it comes to stopping power, the standard Model 3 gets four-wheel internally ventilated disc brakes, 12.6-inch discs in front with four-piston calipers, and 13.2-inch discs in the rear with single-piston calipers and an electronic parking brake. Performance models get an upgraded brake setup. 
The brakes stop in an expected amount of bite, plus they have a regenerative feature, which helps capture kinetic energy from the brakes and recycle it to provide charge to the battery. Simply lifting off the throttle will instigate a notable rate of deceleration. However, there's only two regen modes, standard or low, and it won't bring you to a complete stop like some other EVs out there. Throughout the years of doing these videos, I've never been in a vehicle quite like the Model 3. It feels so futuristic and it takes minimalism to a whole new extreme. Some people may love it, some people may hate it, but you can't argue with the fact that it certainly stands out from the crowd. I love how clean and uncluttered the dashboard is. It runs from side to side unbroken, and that wood veneer is actually part of the premium package. The majority of vehicle features are actually routed through that big central touchscreen, some of which are a little harder to use than they need be, so when you climb in for the first time, it's just going to take you a minute to get used to a different way of doing things. One thing's for sure though, the front seats are very comfortable and supportive. With the premium package, you also get 12-way power adjustments, including lumbar for both the driver and passenger. The steering wheels power tilting and telescoping, but to make adjustments, you have to first go through the touchscreen and then use the little dial on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. This is a very quirky vehicle with a lot of quote-unquote hidden features. Those steering wheel buttons actually do multiple things from adjusting the position of the steering wheel to controlling some infotainment features and even adjusting the angle of your side view mirrors. Overall build quality was a lot better than what I was initially expecting. Of course, there are areas here and there that aren't quite as polished as some of the larger automakers out there, but overall it's pretty nice. In premium package cars, there's covered storage compartments in the center console, which would otherwise be open. There's even a couple of smartphone docks. You can move the entire assembly away if you need to get access to the majority of storage below. While the docks are super cool, they're also kind of limiting because the space around the connectors themselves isn't large enough to account for phones with cases. As you move towards the rear of the console, there's a couple of cup holders and a deep well that houses a 12 volt power outlet and a removable tray. There's cup holders across the door panels as well. The glove box is electrically operated and houses a pretty good amount of space. Every Model 3 comes standard with advanced hardware that's capable of providing enhanced autopilot features. The standard features include automatic emergency braking, front collision warning, and lane departure warning. The enhanced features, part of a $5,000 option package, includes things like lane keeping assist, active park assist, adaptive cruise control, and summon. The latter is one of the more surreal features I've ever used on a car. You basically take your smartphone and use it to pull the vehicle in and out of tight parking spots. While the system is active, the vehicle is literally moving all by itself constantly monitoring its surroundings and making little steering adjustments as necessary. While this is super cool for tight garage spaces, it's also pretty handy for parking lots if somebody ends up parking too close next to you and you can't get the door open. Plus, Summon is fully customizable. You can account for bumper clearances, side clearance, you can tell the car how far it can travel, and more. There's also a number of safeguards built in. For example, if the connection between the car and the app gets disconnected, it'll automatically stop, place itself in park, and apply the parking brake. The same thing goes if the car encounters an object or a wall unexpectedly. Tesla states that the Model 3 will offer full self-driving capability that requires no action from the driver. While I'm still mixed on the idea of a fully autonomous car, it's pretty amazing to see in action. When you're done watching this, head over to Tesla's website, they got a demo of it. When ordering your car, you have the option to pre-order this functionality. Like Enhanced Autopilot, it is more expensive to add after taking delivery. Inside, there's six airbags protecting the front occupants, including knee airbags, and two side curtain airbags for the rear. Other safety features worth noting include a 360 degree camera system with eight cameras strategically located around the car, a long range forward facing radar, and 12 ultrasonic sensors that together closely monitor everything that's happening around you. 
Like I said, the vast majority of the car's features are routed through this screen. There's so much stuff to talk about that you could literally dedicate an entire video on it, but we're going to cover some of the highlights. Off on the left hand side, you have a car icon in the middle. You can pop the front and rear trunks and open up the charge port when you're sitting still, but once you start going down the road, it'll actually show you the proximity of other vehicles around you. Up top is a gear indicator, and that's also where your speed readout will be. Down at the very bottom, there's a few different menus, including a trip computer and a tire pressure monitoring system. In the middle menu, you can bring up the rear view camera, check charge status, activate the voice recognition system, and control your wipers. If you click the car icon in the bottom left of the screen, it brings up this menu. Here you can control the exterior lighting, the various adjustments that I've talked about earlier, the different drive modes, and more. The owner's manual is also loaded up on the system, so if you have a question about how to use a particular feature, it's easy to search. The navigation system is quite awesome, especially because you have this big screen, high-res graphics, and satellite imaging. It's very easy to use. There's actually two different audio systems available as well. Along with the standard setup, you have a surround sound system that comes a part of the premium package. Satellite radio is not offered unfortunately, but you have Bluetooth streaming, HD radio, hands-free telephone, AM, FM, and all of that typical stuff. Obviously, the Model 3 does not use traditional type air vents, so I'm sure a lot of you at some point have wondered how in the world does this HVAC system work? Well, it's really quite fascinating. If you go into the main menu for the climate control system, you have three tiles. The one in the middle has typical type climate settings, you know, different zones, the automatic function, and fan speed. You can also control the heated seats from that section. The heart of the HVAC system is a network of two slender ducts that span the full width of the dash. The ducts have air channels that intersect each other. I found another YouTube channel that did a great job explaining this technology in detail with demonstrations. If you'd like to learn more about it, I put the link in the description box below. But in short, the two outer tiles allow you to adjust the spread of airflow as well as where airflow is being directed. It's very customizable, super complicated in how it works, and one of a kind. Another thing that you might not know about the Model 3 is that you actually have some Easter eggs built in. If you pull up the About Your Tesla menu, there's actually a little sub-menu that automatically pops up, and there's a handful of different things that you can do. I don't know exactly what you would call these, and unfortunately I did not get a demo of Rainbow Road, but it's on YouTube, so just search it and you'll easily find a video. There's one where you can drive on Mars, as you can see, and it pulls up a little spaceship icon, which is super cool, but my favorite is Santa Mode. Ho, ho, ho. It starts playing Chuck Berry's Run Run Rudolph, and instead of the car icon on the left-hand side of the screen, it turns into Santa's sleigh, and all of the vehicles around you become reindeer. If that's not enough, the turn signals become jingle bells. It's so much fun. If that's not enough, you are sitting somewhere bored, you can also doodle on here and submit your quote unquote artwork to Tesla for critique. One of the most surprising aspects of this interior was just how roomy it was considering the car's overall size. It's very well packaged. In fact, you can sit five people comfortably. This is thanks in part to some of the inherent benefits of being a fully electric vehicle. For example, the rear floorboard is completely flat, so if someone is sitting in the middle, they don't have to try to straddle some big drivetrain hump. And the front console, where you have the adjustable air vents, is actually cut out towards the bottom to give you a little bit more wiggle room for your feet. Climbing in is not hard at all. I'm 5'10", and as you can see, I still had plenty of room left to spare. This is with an ideal seating position for myself in front. It's also a really nice place to sit. The seats are comfortable, there's an adjustable headrest in the middle, a fold down armrest with two cup holders, the outer headrests are fixed, you have LED lighting, coat hooks, and those USB ports that I talked about with the premium package. Taking a closer look from a point of view perspective, you can get a better idea of just how airy and open the cabin feels. 
For me, the must-have option is the panoramic roof. There's a tent gradient similar to what you would find on the Model X, and it's just an amazing thing to see in person. The visibility all the way around is phenomenal. Moving towards the rear, the Model 3 has a pretty generous amount of cargo space. I also really like how they designed the trunk lid itself by incorporating some hatch-like elements. The arms reside up further into the C-pillars, which seems to carry the trunk lid up higher and further back than you would typically find in a vehicle like this. The opening is nice and wide, and within you'll find 15 cubic feet worth of space. If you fold down the rear seat, you can expand that space all the way to the front. Underneath the trunk floor, you have a generous cargo well, and another pocket off to the left. There is some LED lighting, but unfortunately there are no cargo tie-downs to help secure things. Like the Model S and Model X, the Model 3 has a front trunk. It can be opened up from the central screen or from the Tesla app on your smartphone. Since there's no engine, it's a pretty clever way to use the extra space. One fun fact about the Model 3 setup is that it was designed to accommodate carry-on luggage. That way, you can rest assured that if it fits up front, it'll fit in the overhead bin. The only situation where that probably won't apply is if you're flying on a regional plane where they had the super small bins and check bags regardless of their size. Also, in case you were wondering, the space up front is the same for dual motor models as well. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the Tesla Model 3. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like below, and if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. There's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.